Hi, I'm Dr. Shweta Goswami, Director of Ziva Fertility. Uh, we are a leading fertility center in Noida and Delhi NCR. COVID infection, of course, has become uh, one of the most uh, anxious giving moments to everybody. We're all uh, skeptical. We, it's, it's an unknown land uh, that we are getting into. And uh, it's a very, very commonly asked question by patients who are contemplating an IVF or a fertility treatment. However, COVID has already delayed it uh, by a couple of weeks for us. And the important question is that, do we start treatment now or not? And a very pertinent question uh, in everybody's mind at that time is, what if I contract COVID infection? Uh, before treatment or uh, more importantly, what if I contract the infection during the course of my treatment, how would it alter my IVF treatment? Uh, so uh, we'll split it into two parts. If we first talk about before uh, if the treatment commences, if we uh, develop COVID infection, what do we do? Now, uh, all of us know that COVID infection uh, is serious and critical in about 5 to 10% cases, 90% of us are asymptomatic and uh, or just have mild infections like any other uh, viral infection like common cold, cough, etc. So the uh, important point is that most of us would do well, fare, uh, fare well and come out of the situation looking good. Uh, but we are, of course, scared, even if uh, we are a young population we're looking at. So again, we know that it's about in uh, the high risk population which is uh, people over the age of 65 or anybody with a comorbid condition who's more at risk. Uh, so my answer to the question would be that in case you're somebody who has any comorbid condition like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, in that case, contemplating IVF pregnancies uh, when you have the COVID infection uh, is a big no. Um, coming to what do we do if we have mild infection, we are contemplating IVF, IVF is just around the corner. But we realize uh, that we've uh, developed a COVID infection. Uh, again, it would depend on how serious the situation is for us. As in, there are some patients for whom uh, starting IVF treatment is kind of a semi-critical thing. So IVF, though it's a very elective procedure, it would still uh, come in a critical condition for people. For example, somebody who has cancer uh, detected and needs to do some kind of uh, gamete preservation, whether it is egg freezing or uh, embryo cryopreservation or sperm cryopreservation. Those are the kind of uh, patients uh, we would suggest that if they are in the middle of the treatment or uh, they're just at the brink of treatment, they're running out of time, they are people who should contemplate doing uh, an ART treatment even uh, if they have contracted the infection, if otherwise things look in control which means that we think they're developing a mild disease. But to anybody who's getting into a serious or a critical state, we all know the answer is a big no. Uh, nothing is more important than our life and our own health, and therefore it should not be contemplated. Uh, for the other patients who have developed COVID infection but were considering IVF or any other fertility or an ART treatment uh, for that matter, IVF is a semi-elective procedure, and therefore whatever can be deferred should be deferred. And uh, again, it means we are deferring it by probably just one cycle. So uh, the COVID infection would usually last for about 14 to 18 days for most patients, by which time we would know uh, whether they are getting into the critical event or not. And if they are developing mild infections, uh, just postponing the treatment is very simple because for us, our uh, infection, uh, our uh, cycle control is very easy and we could... Uh, just uh, postpone the cycle by 15 to 20 days or by 30 days altogether. And uh, that is very much feasible for most patients. As I said, except for patients in which it's very critical, it cannot be delayed by even a month, are the only patients to whom we would suggest that uh, if you come to know that you have a COVID infection prior to commencing treatment, uh, then we should do it. Coming to the more important uh, question that if you've developed COVID infection, while undergoing treatment, then what do you do? Now, uh, again, answering that question, uh, one of the important uh, things that a lot of centers and we already also already offered to you is that IVF, as we know, is a three weeks journey. And in that, uh, the first two weeks is of injections in which we uh, give injections to the woman to make multiple eggs and then we retrieve her eggs. So uh, for a lot of women uh, or a lot of patients are very skeptical, we offer COVID testing at commencement. We do it at the start of ART treatment and then say they could also do a COVID testing 
just two, three days prior to the egg retrieval procedure. That's if we want to be very, very safe. Because the problem for us is that once you've started treatment, you've taken injections, it becomes very, very difficult to uh, withhold treatment at that time because a lot of pain, a lot of injections have already gone in. So if we are very skeptical, doing a COVID test at the commencement uh, is something to be done. Coming to the second part of the question that if we develop the COVID infection uh, during treatment and we may not all of us decide and agree on doing a COVID test at the commencement of treatment. In that case, again, as I said, because within seven days or so, you usually come to know how critical the COVID infection is turning into. Anybody who's getting into the serious or the critical mode or has a drop of oxygen saturation during their monitoring or requires hospitalization uh, during the process, it's a big no. Our, our health is, of course, of a much bigger concern to us, and therefore we must cancel treatment, which means even if they, they've taken the injections during the IV procedure, it's not safe enough to get into uh, a, 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 the whole operation or the procedure of retrieving the eggs. The second aspect is, as I said, 90% of us do well. We are asymptomatic or we just mild positive. In that case, because we've already taken the injections, uh, if the laws of the state so allow. So as we know, a lot of uh, states were mandating that we get quarantined within a government hospital if we develop the COVID infection. Uh, but again, IVF is such a semi-emergency state that if we come to a place where uh, we've reached a tipping point where we've taken 10, 12 days of infection, realize we have COVID infection, then the whole hospital staff must be informed. We must do the egg retrieval procedure because we've taken a painstaking 10, 14 days of the infection. Again, I'm suggesting only if we are medically stable and it seems to be a mild disease. In that case, with proper precautions in place, with proper PPE, with all uh, taking all the precautions in place, the woman's egg retrieval can be done. And similarly, the husband can come in and give a semen sample. And then after that, we discharge them as quickly as we can, maintaining or uh, taking care in the hospital setup. And after that, the next step of the IVF, very importantly, is the embryo transfer or the implantation process, which is the process that helps us in conception. Now, if you are known to have a COVID infection, then again, we do not advise into getting pregnant at that stage because we don't, again, want to get into the unknown space of where we do not know how the COVID infection would affect early pregnancy. And which is why, again, in IVF, it's very easy for us that once we have the egg, we've got the embryos, we fertilize them, we can always freeze these embryos and transfer them in the next month when uh, the situation is in much better control, when we've already developed antibodies against the COVID infection. So uh, it would, uh, in my opinion, we must complete the procedure if possible. If we are just very early into treatment, just two, four injections done, we might as well cancel, wait out a month and do it. But if we are already almost to the point of getting into egg retrieval, where 10, 12 days we've given uh, the in injection, then under very important uh, precautions with PP, et cetera, we can uh, take the eggs out, but stop the procedure at that very end. Again, similarly, a lot of uh, patients or women would be undergoing planning for frozen embryo transfer, which means we already have the embryos frozen or cryopreserved for them. And we have to go on to do the embryo transfer, which would facilitate pregnancy. In such a state, again, because it's a very elective stage that we are in, because our embryos are already frozen, we are just on medications, we're not in any injections. And therefore, if we depth uh, find out that we've contracted the COVID infection during the time of planning our embryo transfer, uh, again, our suggestion would be to cancel the cycle because there is no harm lost in canceling the cycles. Our embryos are still frozen. They could easily remain frozen for a couple of weeks or months more. There is absolutely no problem in that. And therefore, it's, and it's also no difficulty on the patient because she's just taken some medications. And also, because if you conceive during COVID infection, we really don't know. It's too early enough for us to know how much impact is it going to have on a pregnancy. And therefore, in such situations, it should be cancelled. So to summarize, my suggestion would be that wherever there is a critical event, where it is a procedure like a before cancer treatment or chemotherapy where it cannot be postponed. Similarly, if a patient has already undergone a lot of stimulation and just realized and she's asymptomatic and she is not having a severe COVID infection. And therefore, it's very inhuman to tell her to cancel cycle and then do it the next month. 
then we just would do an egg retrieval and cryopreserver embryos. But at any point where you have COVID infection and we are contemplating doing an implantation process, whether it is a fresh transfer or a frozen transfer, that should preferably be deferred because we know that for most patients, 15 to 18 days of COVID infection and we are clear of it. So there is absolutely no harm in uh, postponing the cycle by a month where we are uh, medically and health-wise much more acceptable to undergo a pregnancy. So I wish you all the best for the same.